What is up guys? I'm the Motorcycle Mick and today you see we've got the sports drought but I want to do something cool today and that's because there's a lot of people that actually don't ride motorcycles and it might just be the fear, it might be a money thing or just might be you don't know how to ride or you're afraid to learn or it might be really expensive where you live. So with that being said, today I'm going to give the basics on how to ride a motorcycle. Now in my opinion, a cruiser style motorcycle is easiest to learn on. It's got lower center of gravity. They're just kind of easier in general to learn how to ride in the beginning. And then once you want to get up there to bigger bikes, you can learn pretty easily. But for my opinion on this, I think learning to ride on a cruiser is just way easier because it's got the low center of gravity, easy ground clearance, your feet can touch all the time. You're not really learning how to do that. For me, this is why I learned to ride a Harley on. This is my, you know, you guys have already seen this before. This should be noted. This is not a replacement for a course. I do not want you to go out and replace this video with actually taking a riding course and getting out. This is just basically a general knowledge video on what you need to learn to be able to ride a motorcycle. And if you have one, you don't have a license yet, and you wanna to learn to ride it, you can practice these in the driveway. Do not use this on the street. It's not what it's intended for. With that being said, let's get on the bike and show you guys some of the parts you're gonna to need to learn. So let's start with two handles that you see. This is your brake. Pull this to stop the bike, along with, on the Sportster, the pedal down here. This operates the rear brake. Guys, and yes, I know my bike is dirty. So, brake handle, brake pedal. What those all you to do is to stop the front wheel, which the top one does. This will stop your front wheel. The bottom stops your rear wheel. Now, if you do have ABS on the bike, they might do both. So, just depends, you need to learn what kind of bike you have. Next up, we have the clutch now this is the one where it kind of gets to people where it's like you know oh i've never driven a stick or anything like that and i don't know well this is the clutch you pull this in to be able to use the shift lever down there so what you want to do if you watch is pull the lever then move it up or down if you're downshifting now with that being said getting started is probably one of the more harder parts of riding a motorcycle and that's because most people have the fear of balancing it. But if you have any memories of riding a bicycle as a kid growing up, learn to ride a bicycle, which if you can't ride a bicycle, I recommend you learn that first. If you can, then you have the memories of your mom, dad, weird family member pushing you off and maybe you fell the first time. Well, now that you got the falling part out of the way on bicycles, that's why you come into motorcycles and it's the same balancing effect. You just gotta learn a little bit more on steering and the ability to maneuver the bike. Now talking about the actual shifting, this is where it changes a little bit because a lot of bikes have between five and six gears. So it could really depend on which kind of bike you ride. But for me on this one, what you're gonna see is when you hold the clutch in and you shift down, that's gonna put you into first gear. Then after that, you have four gears up. So you shift down once, hold the clutch, shift down. And then once you get going, you can shift up up to four more times to put you into fifth gear. My heritage that you've seen in other videos has six and it still has the same mechanism of one down, five up. So that's really pretty straight across the board. Just be, should be noted for you guys that they have between five and six gears. Now when you're sitting on the motorcycle, stand up or you can leave it down if you're wearing learn it. That's gonna look like as, as you're accelerating, which so the throttle, you're gonna have to release the throttle, pull in on your clutch, and shift up. Or if you're coming to a stop, you're gonna release the throttle, hold the clutch, and shift down. Now a big thing you wanna remember is engine braking is something that you should use to your advantage. If you put the bike in neutral, you don't have any control over it, and you're just rolling at that point. And then honestly, matching the revs for it is really what's gonna cause you problems. So you wanna be very careful. So always make sure that you're only shifting down one gear at a time. When you do that, you want to make sure you're matching the revs to the point where it lowers down to the next gear below. You want to make sure that you keep control and when you downshift or you shift up, that you are holding in the clutch. Now you can figure out where the clutch will engage at for you. you know, everyone's bike is different where the clutch will start engaging. Just pull in and release. When you first start getting one, and I'll show you this, is that you want to 
be in first gear and slowly release as you're pulling the throttle. Now you've figured out how to get on the bike, you've figured out the throttle, you've figured out the clutch, you've figured out the brake. You want to start moving because now you've figured out how to start the bike. You've maybe sat on there a couple of times and drive the motor and been excited. Now is actually the time to get the bike from one destination to the next. That's where it comes to be a little bit tricky because one of the hardest things about actually being on a motorcycle is starting and stopping. Now there's a whole other situation where you have to worry about watching everyone around you, paying attention to the traffic, paying attention to things in the road. But what you really want to do is make sure that when you're riding, that you know how to start and stop. Once you can do that, then in between gets a little bit easier. Then you can control where you're shifting at and how much power you want to give it. The big thing is starting and stopping. People will tell you when you're starting to ride the bike, you know, just walk it. Slowly release the clutch and you're just walking with the bike, which I'll probably insert a clip of now. And then you have the other method where it's just kind of waddling. Now when you do this, you want to make sure you have a decent stretch of road or driveway. For me, I'm doing this in a parking lot. It's a perfect place. Parking lot is the perfect place to practice. It's lightly disturbed. I mean, there's no one that really comes through here all the time. That's where I'll show you the waddling technique right about now. All those can be used to build up where you want to be at. Actually riding the bike, proper use of the throttle, the clutch, and the brake. Allowing you to be able to ride a lot better once you start building up speed. So once you start out walking, it kind of gives you the feeling of the movement. Once you start waddling, it kind of gives you the better of the balance. If you are a first time rider, never been on anything that moves fast with a motor like this, I would say definitely go through and start off with the walking part, just kind of releasing the clutch and controlling it and allowing you to feel the control of the bike and allowing you to feel the movement of it. And then you start to move up to the waddling process. And that's where you really want to build up to getting going. Once you get started, stopping is a lot easier. You just want to make sure you use both feet. When you stop, like put both feet down. If you don't have ABS, you want to use both brakes. I mean, I have ABS on my heritage. I still use both brakes as I'm stopping because relying on electronic components is just not really what I want to do. But this will help you get to the point of actually getting on the bike and riding. And that's what we're about to do right now. Remember to hold the clutch in while you're starting the motor in gear. Actually, general of thumb, hold it in all the time.
So like I said, this is just a general video on what you want to be doing when you're learning to ride the bike. It's not actually meant to replace an actual riding course, which I do recommend. It's it's very beneficial to you. It'll help out, I guess, with insurance so that you have a rider's course on there. And eventually, once you take basic rider's course, you get some time, get your own bike. You can take ARC, which is a much more in-depth course about riding. And it shows you far better things than you'll learn in BRC. BRC is to get you on the bike to get you riding. ARC is gonna get you more advanced. This being said, putting it all together, you want to apply the clutch and place the bike in gear, which will be first gear down. After you do that, you're going to slowly release the clutch until you feel engaged like you saw in the video. You'll, you'll see where it starts engaging and you can feel the bike start to pull and bog down. Then you apply throttle and then you do what I showed you in the beginning. You can walk it or you can waddle it and be able to put it all together. Now, while you are waddling, you do want to make sure that you are keeping your balance and maybe giving yourself a little bit of time where you got some hang time between your feet and allowing you to feel the balance of the bike. Once you get into turns, I'm actually turning my head and looking where I'm going, along with turning the handlebars not too sharp. You'll have to lean too, but most of the time when you apply, you just kind of look towards the direction of where you're going, you're gonna feel that bike lean with you and then eventually you're gonna start leaning a little bit more and learn where that perfect point is for you to make turns the way you feel you want to versus the way it's gonna feel awkward at first because you're gonna be uncomfortable with balancing along with the bike being leaned as you're turning. At that point, you wanna take turns slowly, not too slow, but slow enough to where you can still control the bike and allow for you to not top side it, which is top siding is when you're gonna turn and you fly off the bike the other way. Laying it down obviously just means the bike slides on its side. Top siding will fling the bike from one side to the other. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's all I have for you today. If you did, give this video a like down below. Give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button, which is somewhere around here. I hope you guys learned a little bit from this. The more you ride, the more you get used to it and it becomes second nature. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got to learn a little bit on starting to ride a motorcycle. I appreciate everyone that watched my videos. That is all I have for you guys. I hope you all take it easy. And remember to always ride for freedom.